This is a demonstration how I integrated OpenAI into Slack as a bot using a slash command so that in some channel I can now type in slash OpenAI and uh, ask any question I could think of, such as um, give me a brief history of the Nintendo company, say. And give me a short message saying I'm thinking about it, and then I should get a response in a couple of seconds. There we go. And I won't read you this whole thing, but you can see that looks like it's done a pretty good job of summarizing the entire company. So the that is the outcome of this uh, demonstration, is that you'll be able to go slash open AI, type anything you can think of, and it will give you the answer right within Slack. Next up is how do we build a bot for Slack? that interacts with OpenAI. And I have laid out the steps here. I will add a link to the source code that's available um, publicly on GitHub. So I'll add this link soon. But I thought it'd be useful maybe just to walk you through this uh, anyway, just to show you what to do as clearly as possible. So the stack. Firstly, this whole project was inspired by a friend of mine, Mark Hartnady, who built, I think, essentially the same program um, for a bot that you can ask OpenAI anything in, but the whole thing was built on Python. So do go and check out his project if you're a Python fan or just want to learn. This project uh, that I built will be using Firebase, and Firebase has a service called Firebase Functions, and the code for that is written in Node.js. And so that is the code you'll be seeing in this demo. So the first thing you need to do is have an account with OpenAI, because we need an API key uh, in order to do calls to OpenAI in order to get um, completions, as they call them, for prompts. And a prompt is like a question like what is the population of India, and the completion from an open AI will be the languaging around that, um, depending how you ask the question. I've written another article about that that's quite entertaining. If you ask something like, what is the population uh, of India as told by, say, Donald Trump? And it'll be his way of speaking, for example. Anyway, OpenAI, that's a whole conversation and it's super interesting and it's out of the scope of this tutorial, but overall you need to get an API key from OpenAI. And so you will go to this link, platform.openai.com and you'll sign up however you choose to sign up. And then under the menu here, you'll see there are API keys, which I'm not gonna show you mine of course, but you go and then you create yourself an API key. Once you have the API key uh, in your code here, uh, you need to create a .env file, and which, again, I'm not going to show you because it's got my API key in it, but you basically put in this exactly, open API under, sorry, open AI underscore API underscore key equals, and then whatever the key is that you got from open AI. And that's the whole setup you need to do for OpenAI over there. Then for Firebase, you need to create an account. So you go to, so this assumes you have a Google account already. And then you go to Firebase and you'll create a new uh, project. And once you have the project set up, you'll have a project ID. So for example, uh, this is my, um, one of my Firebase projects that I've created and here you can grab the uh, ID for the project, which in my case is OpenAI1111. And yours will be whatever yours is. And then in 
the .firebase RC, you will replace the default here with whatever your idea is in your Firebase project. Okay. Then, we, then you'll go into the functions directory in your browser. So if you are using, say, visual code, you can go cd functions. And in here um, is these files here. And there's a package.json file with the um, libraries that need to be installed. So it's basically some Firebase ones. Got is for making external calls and OpenAI is to interact with OpenAI and npm install will install all those libraries. Then running Firebase deploy takes the code and pushes it to your uh, Firebase project that you would have created. And lastly, you need to upgrade your Firebase project to the Blaze plan. And uh, the reason for that is the code makes calls to OpenAI um, yeah, to their API. So in order to do, in order to make outbound calls, you need to have a Blaze plan for Firebase. Then after we have set up OpenAI and Firebase, we need to tell Slack how to interact with our code. I'll go over the code in a bit. So firstly, you need to create an app in Slack. So to do that, you go to api.slack.com forward slash apps. You'll need to log in and all that kind of stuff. But once you're in there, you can create a new app and you will be presented with this kind of screen. Now, as you saw in my demo, I used a slash command, which looks something like the slash open AI. And so we're gonna set up a slash command in Slack. And to do that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you click create a new command. And after that, you enter in some details. And one of the important details to enter there is the URL for our Firebase. So here, the command, you can call it um, cleverbot or any clever boy <laughs> or anything you like. And then the URL. And now what is this URL? This URL, when you've deployed your code to Firebase, um, and you click functions, I won't do it because it's all my private URLs. But when you click functions, you'll see a list of all the functions available. You'll then copy the particular URL uh, in functions that will be created for you and then paste it in here. And what will happen then basically every time someone types slash clever boy and some text in your in Slack, it'll send that prompt so if you go slash clever boy um who made the universe it'll send who made the universe and some other information to the url that you put in here all right then once you set up your slash commands however you would like to again it doesn't have to be open ai it can be any name that is interesting or meaningful to you and then you go to install app and I won't click that again because it exposes some private tokens, but in install app, you basically click install and then it'll ask you for, to confirm and then you'll have access uh, to it within your Slack account. And then from there, you should be able to go slash whatever you called your slash command and uh, ask anything you want. And that should be it. Okay, so at this stage, you should have OpenAI running in your Slack account so that you can run questions uh, about anything. And it's a very impressive looking bot. And we've basically wired up um, from Slack, we created a bot, which every time a slash command is entered, it'll then call our Firebase functions account. Uh, when Firebase functions gets a notification from Slack that some text was entered, it'll then do a call to OpenAI with that prompt and get a, a fancy response and then send it back to Slack and display it in the Slack uh, channel. So that's the high level overview. So this next part now is I'm going to go through the code a bit as to how uh, this works in more detail. So we're using Firebase functions 
which I already said is going to be in Node.js. And so Firebase function has an entry point called index.js. And the way it basically works uh, is that we can declare a endpoint for people to access. Um, I'm, the function's called Slack, but it'll generate a more complete URL that you'll see in your functions dashboard, which you would have entered in your Slack slash command that um, will then process the information coming in from Slack. And so here we have a request and response, um, which is classic for HTTP calls. And this is what the code will do. So someone types something in Slack, goes slash uh, open AI, um, how many species of mice are there? And we will get into um, our function here. This will be called from Slack. And this code will be sitting in Firebase functions. And the very first thing we need to do, and this is important because Slack will time out if it hasn't heard anything within three seconds. We need to go, hey, um, we have we know that you've pinged us, Slack, uh, but we're not quite ready with the complete answer yet because OpenAI might take some time to process this. So we immediately send back a message, which you'll notice got displayed uh, immediately. Let me think about this. Um, that'll be immediately displayed within three seconds, for sure, in Slack. And then we take whatever the text is that was entered after the slash command, and we create a completion. This is an open AI terminology. Um, and we'll get their response. And I'll go over this in more detail in a second. But basically, let's say we go, what is the population of India? And then the text here will be, um, you know, a number or what might be something more entertaining if you were like, what's the population of India um, as spoken by an angry housewife <laughs> or something? Um, the text will be whatever OpenAI has figured out for you. And then when Slack sends its message to message to us after we enter the slash command, it also sends something called a response URL. And that response URL is very useful because it means, I think it's up to five times, up to 30 minutes. So OpenAI can think about completing, answering this question. It can take up to 30 minutes if it wanted to. It no, I've never had anything take that long. It's more like, you know, 10, 15 seconds at most so far. Um, you can then do a post request to that uh, response URL with um, some information for which will then be displayed in the channel, as you saw here. We got, let me think about this, and then sometime later, after I got the result from OpenAI, I then posted its um, result into Slack. So here I'm basically using the got library to do a post request to the response URL with um, the text. And I formatted it in such a way that I've got the original prompt, which is give me a brief history of the Nintendo company. So I remember what I even asked and uh, whatever text that came back from um, OpenAI. And I just put it below, whatever that might be. Okay, so that is um, more actually how Firebase functions works than anything. Next, I'll go into how the OpenAI uh, calls work. All right, next step. So here I basically walked you through the Firebase functions architecture a bit, where we have a functions directory, we have an entry point at index.js, and uh, we create an endpoint that we can use in Slack that will send data to it um, whenever the slash command is executed in Slack. So this is the endpoint that it sends data to. All right. <clears throat> So what the thing I haven't gone over much yet in detail is this create completion. So I created a little module called OpenAI over here. And this basically just goes over uh, how we get a really smart, a really smart answer from um, OpenAI. So let's go for it. So I installed the OpenAI library for Node.js. Um, this open API key is whatever you would have put in your .env file. So that's my key. And then I created this function called create completion. 
I call it create completion because that's exactly what OpenAI calls it um, for them. I try and stick with their terminology. But essentially, there's not much to it. Uh, there, we, you can look in the docs as to all the different options you have, but I choose the model, which is created through um, the training that OpenAI does. I pass in the prompt, which is um, whatever the person asks. So like, what is the brief history of Nintendo? And then there are these there's this temperature um, key value pair, which I won't go over. It's, it starts getting quite technical. Uh, max tokens is kind of important though. This is sort of basically the amount of, you can think of it as amount of text that will be returned. I think by default, this number is quite low. I think it's like 16, I might be mistaken. And so basically that uh, will limit how long this answer can be. Um, if it if if you give a really big number, which you could, I think like two thousand, um, you can do that. But it does, OpenAI does cost. Um, they have give you a free amount for the first month or something like that. But then you do pay uh, for it. So, I thought three thirty three, this is kind of a fun number, and uh, gave a reasonable amount of text back uh, for an answer for whatever I wanted to know. Something you know, not essay ish, but this is seems useful and fun. So. Not super well thought out. Basically, these values, many other values you'll see in the docs, you can tweak as much as you want. Um, so this will use OpenAI uh, library to do a call, an async call. So we wait. This is JavaScript, uh, Node.js, and which is JavaScript. And um, when we get the result, we then it's it's an object basically, and there's a lot of bits in it. So there's a particular part of that object that I will return, which is the uh, the specific text, which you see here. Um, if you're interested, you could also, what I do here, I, I log out um, the more complete object to look at. It's kind of interesting to look at and all the different things if you really wanted to get into the tweaking of things. But essentially, we just want the text uh, for the most part to get it working. And that is uh, then returned to here and then like i said then we send it on to um, slack again after we've already sent the initial response and that is the full um, flow of getting open ai working in slack i hope that was useful thanks